Welcome to our DC 12 club members and our club 52 members tuning in for this very special Q&A featuring the Capital City Go-Go general manager, Amber Nichols. Amber, thanks so much for taking some time. I know you're really busy. Push for the playoffs. You're down right now in Orlando in the G League bubble. Can you give us some insight and kind of explain to some of the season ticket members that may be unfamiliar with what this season is like for the G League? Yes, so this year's G League season is taking place uh, at the ESPN Wild World of Sports at Disney. Um, 18 teams in total participated. Uh, the Wizards actually sent, we flex assigned uh, five of our players, including Cassius Winston, Caleb Holmesley, Jordan Bell, Yoli Childs, and Marlon Taylor to the Erie Bayhawks. And so we came down here, uh, we got here January 27th. Um, we spent about two weeks prior to that in Clearwater, Florida, just getting the guys acclimated uh, to the G League and making sure that they follow health and safety protocol before we arrived on campus. Um, since being here, we, we will play a total of 15 games. We're 10 and 2 right now. Um, we sit atop of, of the league in terms of standings, and we clinched our, our playoff berth last night with a win against Greensboro. We have three more games to go this week. We play Santa Cruz tomorrow, which is the G League affiliate for the Golden State Warriors. And then we finish our season with a back to back on Friday and Saturday with Oklahoma City Blue, as well as our last game against the Westchester Knicks, which is the G League affiliate for the New York Knicks. So for anyone who might be unaware, can you give um, an explanation as to what the flex assignment means with regards to what the Wizards are doing utilizing Erie Bayhawks, the Erie Bayhawks roster? Yes. So in a typical G League season, NBA teams that don't have their own G League affiliate are able to flex assign their two ways and NBA assignments to a team, to another G League affiliate that may not be associated with their team. And so this year, the G League allowed us to extend that rule um, for teams that are not participating fully in the bubble. So we were able to take advantage of that and have, you know, three of the guys that were in training camp with us, along with a returning rights guy and, and NBA champion and Jordan Bell and Cassius, and allowed us to flex assign all of those guys to Erie who absorbed those guys and we're participating as the Bayhawks. So, you know, Mike Williams and myself were also able to accompany those guys down here. Um, and we've just been running it and participating as if we're the Bayhawks. Um, and, and it's been a great experience so far. So we brought you on here to have a Q&A. As I mentioned off the top, our DC 12 club members and our Club 52 members are longtime season ticket holders for both the Wizards and the Mystics. They have submitted some fan questions for you. So I'm going to hop right into those uh, okay. because they want to get to know Amber Nichols. You're, even though you've been part of the Wizards organization for the last few years, they, they want to get to know you as you, but also in your new role as the GM of the GoGo. So the first one, and they want to know when you were named GM. Can you tell us about your journey? They want to know specifically as to how you were able to climb the ranks within the Wizards organization. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, I started in, in ticket sales. That was my first full-time job ever in the NBA. And I was in the inside sales program for the Sacramento Kings after graduating from the University of Georgia with my master's in sports management. Um, I was in Sacramento for about 10 months and, you know, I was selling season season membership passes uh, for Golden One Center, which is the new arena for, for the Kings. And, you know, I was doing that, but I was also networking to try to get over to the basketball side um, outside of outside of my responsibilities um, in ticket sales. And, you know, my first chance in basketball ops came in the form of an internship with the Wizards for the 2016-17 season. Um, and so I spent that season with them learning um, that was the year that it was Coach Brooks's first year, and uh, we ended up going to the Eastern Conference semif semifinals that year. So, you know, it was a great experience for me. And then from there, I ended up uh, going to the Players Association and working under Chris Chen in player development and strategy. Um, and then also worked with Dan Gladstone in, in grassroots basketball and business development for the Players Association. And then um, after Summer League, I was able to start the interview process for a basketball operations analyst role at the G League front office, um, in which I was there for a year at the G League front office doing game ops and basketball ops. Um, honestly, working with you know expansion clubs and, and doing everything from, from scouting and, and running the logistics for all of the G League evaluation events that occur during a, a standard basketball season. Um, and then from there, the, the Wizards started the go-go in 2018. So I was fortunate enough to interview for the director of basketball operations role um, and returned to D.C., which is, you know, where it all started for me. 
Uh, and from there, I was you know, promoted to assistant general manager last year um, and, and honored to be promoted to general manager uh, this past January. So they also want to know, obviously, with this new appointment as the GM, uh, you made history within the Wizards organization as the first female general manager and the second general manager that is a female within the NBA G League. And you tie in with Tori Miller there, who you're very familiar with uh, and friends with, and you're both black female. So when you look at that opportunity, uh, another fan question was, can you talk about what it's been like to be a young woman working in a historically male dominated industry? Yeah, you know, it's, it's been a, a good experience so far for me, um, just because, you know, the environment here in DC has, has been good and easy for me to transition in. And, you know, I have a lot of, you know, leaders that are women in other organizations as a part of Monumental to look up to and to feed off of. Um, and then as well as, you know, Tommy and, and the rest of the Wizard staff, just making it very easy for me to be my authentic self and contribute um, to the organization. It, it's been a great experience. And, you know, I've also learned from Tori, you know, she was down here in a bubble a couple of weeks ago. We were able to kind of chat and just kind of just, you know, soak it all in and, and me compare, you know, my experience with her experience in her first couple of weeks. Um, so it's, it's been an honor. And, and I think, you know, my experience as a black woman is, is one that it may not be the same as others, but, you know, I'm very grateful to, to have a, a good experience. Um, and I, I think that's something that's important to note is that, you know, all experience, you know, may not be tough. There actually may be some, you know, seamless experiences. And, and honestly, mine has been, you know, of that nature. Can you tell us more about your relationship in working with Wizards general manager, Tommy Shepard, and how you two work together, but also separately? Because, you know, at the end of the day, it's two separate teams, even mm -hmm. though you are one entity um, with the, you know, the Wizards utilizing the go-go to develop guys. But can you tell us more about your relationship in working with Tommy? Yeah, my relationship with, with Tommy is, is, is really good. And honestly, it started, you know, when I was an intern and and, uh, you know, he, he believed in me from day one and, you know, he's always invested in me and supported my growth, you know, whether it was with the Wizards or, you know, with, you know, the other stops on my journey, he was always in constant contact with me and I was always able to learn from him and pick his brain. Um, and so when I stepped into this role, the fact that our relationship was so strong made the integration, you know, between the two teams so much easier and seamless. And uh, he and I just communicate a lot. Like we, we often talk maybe once or twice a day. Um, he's very, very in tune with what's going on down here in the G League bubble. And I think that speaks to, you know, his inv investment in the G League. Like he's, you know, watching our games, watching G League games in general, asking how the guys are doing, how their mental space is. Um, and so we communicate, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and it's, it's been a great situation communicating and learning from him. Um, our, our situation is a little bit different because obviously, you know, he's running the NBA club. And I can try to replicate, you know, that as much as possible, but the two leagues are, are different. Um, so, you know, we have separate responsibilities in that, right? But in terms of, you know, the culture and, and our goal um, to develop for the Wizards, we're very on the same page, you know, in terms of that. So another one uh, for you, and I, I really like this question uh, because I think uh, it's something that is always interesting to hear, not just general managers, but coaches um, and, and players as well too. So. When it comes to obviously this being your first season, how will you measure your success in the first year as a GM and what are your year one goals? Yeah, um, so, you know, obviously in the G League, it's easy to get caught up, you know, in wins and losses as a terms of measurement of success. Um, but I, I believe there's a very fine balance in, you know, how successful the team is as a unit, you know, getting all of these guys that, you know, may have been superstars, you know, in college to come and, and maybe take a limited role into play together is honestly my version of success. And we've been able to do that here um, in the G League bubble, as well as, you know, their individual development. You know, Mike and I sat down um, and created, you know, development plans for each guy going into to the year. Um, and, and basically those plans, you know, set forth what the, the vision that we have for them um, and then how they can also, you know, be successful and grow and contribute to the Wizards organization. And so, you know, seeing how much they've grown from day one to day 45, we'll be at day 45 on Saturday, is honestly the true measurement of success to see how they've grown as people, to see how they've grown as, as players, and to see how they've endured, you know, such a very difficult situation is, is how I honestly measure, 
you know, my success in, in season one with, with, uh, with this bubble situation, as well as with Mike, you know, staff development is also very important, you know, in the G League and, and him being able to coach two games and, you know, just honestly seeing, you know, his growth from game one to game two that he coached is, is amazing. Um, and so those little things are, are how I would measure, you know, success in year one without having the opportunity to really build a full roster or play a full 50 game G League schedule. I think those are really positive takeaways that I can take. Uh, you know, to measure our success. Now, you kind of already answered this question with the way that you just uh, finished the last question, but what has been the most rewarding aspect of your career thus far? Whether it is, you know, so far your first 40-ish days in the G League bubble or whether it was something previous to this appointment as the GM of the Go-Go. Honestly, it's, it's every time, you know, our players grow, uh, on, and, on and off the court. So I would say like, you know, last year the Wizards played Miami and there was a stretch there where there were like five go-go players, you know, on the floor at the same time. And so like that honestly like was very chilling for me. And, and that was, you know, one of the best moments of my career was, was seeing that. And then also just, you know, the growth of our, our staff. And like you said, like seeing just the excitement of Mike and, you know, on his face when he was coaching his first game and when he got his first win, you know, that's, the most recent memory that I had, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And then honestly, last night when we clinched, just seeing how excited the guys were and just, you know, how happy they were to accomplish, you know, that feat, you know, 15 games in 24 days is hard. And to win, you know, 13 of those or, or 10, 10 of those already, you know, is, is something that, you know, I'm very proud of the guys and proud of, you know, all of the staff for collaborating and getting this done. Has that been one of the, you know, bright spots in this situation is the fact that yourself and Mike, along with the Erie staff, have been able to collaborate and build this chemistry in a matter of days leading up to, you know, game one of the bubble. Has that been, you know, something that you were expecting or is that been a little bit of a surprise for you? Yeah, I mean, honestly, we didn't really know what to expect because, you know, this is very new for both organizations is is having, you know, this many flex assignments as well as two staff members of company need those flex assignments to the bubble. But from day one, you know, their staff really, really embraced us. And, you know, Mike and I, we wanted to show them that we were just in, invested, you know, as much as we were as invested as we were, you know, in their organization for this bubble as we were, in, you know, just our particular guys also. Uh, you know, we treated, you know, their players that they had the same, like we're all just a cohesive unit. And honestly, like that's been the bright spot. And it's, it's, it's honestly like, a, a, like sad, like we're getting sad because like we know we'll never, you know, be able to replicate this again. And, and so like, we, we always joke about it, but we call ourselves the Go Hawks, you know? So it's like, have Capital City, have Bayhawks, but like we've become a family, you know, tight unit down here in terms of the staff and, and the players, you know, they've built relationships and friendships with staff and, and players that will last, you know, a long time. And so I think honestly, that has definitely been a bright spot for us being able to come down here and do it. And I'm forever grateful to Ted for allowing us to even, you know, do this. I think you and I were texting the other day and I think you called them the Erie Capital Go Hawks. Yeah, Capital <laughs> That's like my unofficial name for us. But like, you know, it's it, it's been great. And, you know, we are the Erie Bayhawks. And, you know, we've been very supportive of that. And, you know, I'll wear Erie gear, Michael wear Erie. So it's like, we, we just want to make sure that everyone knows that, you know, we're all in this together. We're one cohesive unit and we all have the same goal. And so that's what we've been reiterating from day one. So I've got one last question for you. And I think it's a fantastic one to end on. What advice do you have for someone who knows what they want to do in life, but isn't quite sure how to get there? Sure. I would say, you know, research, you know, find qualities or responsibilities that you may want to do. And then, you know, try to come up with the title for that and then find people in that title and, and ask them what their, you know, day to day is. Because for me, it took me a while to really know what a general manager does on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, I just knew that I wanted to work in basketball. I like how they build teams. I like scouting players. But I didn't know exactly what that was called very, very early. So I had to kind of do my research, interview people in the basketball operations space to really understand what it was, you know, by title that I wanted to do. And once I, you know, set my sights on that title, you know, it was easy for me to, to figure out the experience that I needed to gather in order to have a shot at it. 
Well, Amber, I want to thank you for taking the time and uh, speaking with me today, really to just answer the questions of our mystics and wizards fans and in the dc12 club and of club course club 52 so thank you for that and of course thank you to our wizards and mystics season ticket members for submitting their questions and thank you all to who joined today for this conversation we can't wait to see all of you when we get back into our arenas and we appreciate you as always for all the support that you give the mystics the wizards and of course the gogo -Go. amber thank you once again for joining us Thank you for having me and thank you to all the fans that you know submitted questions. I really appreciate it.